As most of us know by now, there are two types of tanking. Main tanking, or MT, and off tanking, OT. It's a simple distinction, but for some players, this is enough to be confusing. What is with these letters? Why do these letters? How are these letters doing? Are they fulfilling their needs? Luckily, I do not have any needs, for I am a machine who turns video games into guides. So if you like this one or were helped by it, please hit the like button, leave a comment with your own tips, and subscribe. So in 4 player duties, you are the only tank. Your job is to get enmity, aggro, the enemies hate, for everything, with very few exceptions. Looking at you first boss of Cutter's Cry and the healer tank strat, this makes things simple and obvious. But once you get into 8 player and 24 player duties, you're no longer the only tank. Doing the same things as you do normally are now potentially an issue. When entering a duty, you will likely enter with your tank stance off. That's the skill at level 10 that makes all your actions give tons of enmity. If you somehow got to this video without knowing that much, may I recommend one of my tanking basics guides. Either way, due to the way the level sync system works, if the game lowers your level from you being too high, it removes all buffs. If you are within the expected level, it will not. But this is the rarer case. Whenever you enter a duty, typically your first action is to turn on your tank stance. But now in 8 player duties, there's two tanks, and we do not want you both to do that. If you both are tanking the normal way, centering the boss and then facing it directly north away from the party, it's okay, but still not great. Some bosses have cleaves, attacks that do an AoE in front of them or on you at regular intervals. Other times, tank busters will do AoEs. AoE is area of effect, if you recall. If you're both taking damage unnecessarily, that's a waste and forces the healers to put in more effort than they would need to otherwise. But if you stand away from the tank and end up stealing the enmity lead, the boss will then immediately turn to you and continue its attacks. A minor effect of this is making your melee players hate you for making their positionals harder to hit. On the major end, the boss turns to you, immediately does an AoE, and kills three people because you were standing with the group. Yeah, this is a really bad idea. So the solution for this is simple, the main tank and off tank. Main tank takes the boss, while the off tank handles all other tanking tasks if and when they show up. The issue that comes first is, who is the main tank? A silent rule people typically hold onto is that the main tank is whoever turns on their tank stance first. Turn it on first, you're the main tank, boss is yours. However, being silent communication, or as I'd call it, a complete lack of communication, some players may not know this silent rule exists. They might turn on their stance and run in without warning, despite you already having your stance on, typically newer players, since again, silent rule. So if you ever really want to main tank something, or really want to avoid tanking it, feel free to use your words. I know, words are scary. I'm shaking with fear and trying not to pass out as I read these sentences from my script but we all need to use them if we want to properly communicate our intentions. Once a main tank is picked, we're done, right? No. The off tank does not keep their stance off the entire fight. Off tank responsibilities tend to all involve turning your stance on for one reason or another. Let's keep it simple and start with fights who have no adds, additional enemies, or secondary bosses. One boss, one enemy to tank. The off tank still needs to turn on their stance. But I just got done telling you not to. Well, that's at the start of the fight. After finishing your opening rotation, typically, you want to turn on your stance. That is because of this up here, the enmity rankings. As the off tank, anything below a 2 is a bad idea. Relegating themselves as the main tank does not mean they are a good tank. They might suck and never use mitigations. Or the healers could mess up and let them die. If you do not have second place, that means someone else does. Someone who isn't a tank. Someone who can't take hits. So when the main tank dies, the boss is going to start killing off your party one by one. And that assumes it doesn't throw an AoE to kill three of them at once. If you are second in line though, the boss will start hitting you. This makes you the new main tank. And you will usually remain the main tank until you die, or the boss does. This makes the main tank who died the new off tank. So you're gonna turn your stance on after your opener and then leave it on. Still no. Again, we have this enmity ranking. Combine this with the enemy list. Enemies have this little icon that will change based on your enmity level. As you gain on the main tank, 
it will begin to turn red. The final icon before you rip the lead is a rounded triangle. It acts as an arrow for whether you're gaining or losing ground on the main tank as well. You have two options. The first, Shirk. Shirk removes some of your enmity and gives it to your target. Your target should obviously be the main tank. This is only a temporary measure though. If your enmity generation is higher than the main tank, eventually you will steal the lead. So the second option is once you see that rounded triangle, turn off your tank stance. At this point, you probably can just leave it off for the rest of the fight. It is very unlikely for the rest of your party to overtake you before the fight ends. You have a huge buffer now, while not stepping on the main tank's toes. If they die, the boss is very safely in your hands, and you can simply turn your stance back on. For as many words as explaining all that took, it's very simple in practice. It's all about understanding you want to be in second place. Let's now assume that the main tank has it covered. What are your roles as an off tank? Before I list them, let me say that the Alexander Raid series is perfect for practicing most of these. This Raid series has so many different examples and you'll be seeing plenty of footage of it. So yeah, what roles do we have? Well, standing in front of the boss for tank busters. Wait, what? I just told you not to do that either. That's because I want to emphasize that while we have rules in place, they often get broken in this fight or that. Later on in the game, there will be tank busters with two floating red orbs. Sadly, all good examples of that are spoilers and can't be shown, so here's a very zoomed in clip to show the marker. Unmarked shared AoEs are far less common with how markers have been standardized, but there's unmarked ones here in Alex. Let's take A8 and A9. In A8, we have double rocket punch. If you take this alone, it hurts a lot but it's in the name, Double Rocket Punch. Two punches for two tanks. Sharing the damage, the off tank will just naturally heal up through raid-wide healing. Faust Z in A9 meanwhile, well, the footage speaks for itself. The tank gets absolutely wrecked for the first hit, but takes a lot less when I step in. I had even asked in chat if the shared cleave was savage or here, and well, it was here. There's also the fights that give both tanks a tank buster. Rather than one tank getting one AoE, both of you will get hit with something. When there are multiple bosses, yeah, of course there will be multiple busters. But I mean, one boss, multiple busters. These tend to go specifically on the tanks in newer fights, but older fights, it's enmity based. So going back to that keeping in second place, if you aren't in second, someone else is getting an entire tank buster. And then in stuff like Extreme, even new fights are enmity based. The next situation is when there are multiple enemies. A 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, and 11 all have some form of secondary enemy. Adds, they're all yours while the main tank takes the boss. Grab them so they don't eat your party. You can bring them right up to the boss for people to do AoE, depending on enemy count and such. The main issue is when it's two enemies at once. Each of you will take one. Do you stack them, or keep them spread? In A1, you need to keep the bosses spread. Bismarck trial? Spread the snakes out for the snake phase. But in A8, you can stack them. There's no reason to keep them apart. More often than not, when there are specifically two enemies, one for each tank, you need to keep them spread out. But they can make exceptions whenever they damn well please. We also have non-standard sorts of responsibilities. The biggest example here would be Susano and his Sword Slash. One of the tanks has to take the sword and do the ATM, but the other tank isn't just there to do DPS. They have a job. These orbs that show up and progress towards the tank during the clash, they do a lot of damage, especially to non-tanks. So the tank not doing the clash, usually the off tank, needs to eat the orbs before they explode on the party. There are other fights that do non-standard situations that you will just have to learn about as you reach them. Even if I listed them all, Dawn Trail is half a year away. They could do whatever new kinds of things, so be ready to experience them as they happen. Finally, I'll mention the least brought up thing you can do. Throw mitigation on your main tank. Intervention, Nation Flash, Heart of Stone, Aurora, The Blackest Night, and Oblation. These tools that can be given to other players. You can throw your tank friends some mitigations. These can be used in other ways like protecting other party members and all, but the simplest and most obvious use is helping with tank busters. Get comfy with your toolkit and use these to help the party as a whole. 
On a similar vein is Reprisal. Typically, you want to alternate reprisals with your tank friend, but in casual content, you're not going to be planning together all too much. This will be something you will want to try to consider now, though. Reprisal can reduce raid-wide attack damage, mechanics, or tank busters. Come high tiers of content, this will be important. Let's move on to 24-player content. There's three tanks now. The same rules for enmity apply. Be the leader for your party, but let one tank take control of main tanking. Who's the main tank in this one is even more silent. It's kind of just whoever goes for it first, I guess. It's not based on being A alliance or anything of that sort. You just go. In this Labyrinth of the Ancients run, I kind of relegated myself as the main tank by accident. Though I think that was the right call given this happened. And the Iron Giants weren't being taken. Basically a lot happened. This duty shows a lot of stuff though. Trash mobs? Every tank wants to take part and usually stack everything. One tank taking everything can lead to... Oof, I am chunked. I was trying to save cooldowns, but uh... I should have used more, I guess. Then there's the Atomos. Parties have to manually split themselves into A, B, and C. This happens in World of Darkness too. You need to fight all three or wipe. Having to manually split up happens a lot, even when it's a singular arena. Sometimes the game likes to be generous and automatically split your group into three spots. But regardless, when splitting up, you're usually all the main tank. Three enemies, yeah, you're each tanking one thing. But just like the tank busters that hit both tanks, a lot of bosses will hit both tanks with auto attacks. Or in alliance raids, all three. Notice I am not the aggro lead, but still taking auto attacks. Every tank is tanking at the same time. Just about every single case of a stationary boss with a ring around it will have all three tanks doing their stuff. So sometimes off tanking isn't even off tanking. It's just main tanking by another name. At the next boss, the main tank returns to being the singular main tank. Then on the very rare case, the game will force a specific tank to be the main tank. An Orban Monastery boss, and this one in Labyrinth. You cannot damage the boss unless the magic pots give you a buff. It rotates in order. Team A, then B, then C, then repeat so long as the pots survive. Tank A is forced to main tank until their buff wears off, and it becomes B's turn. And while I can't show it, there's still other weird exceptions like the one boss and the Endwalker raids. Two bosses are fought at once. The third tank just does DPS until one of them dies. Yeah, so expect plenty of unique responsibilities as you progress. There is likely other important things to mention I've forgotten, but I'm sure the comments will make up for that, right everyone? But of course the video isn't done. Some of the things that still can be relevant to normal content are especially relevant to Extreme and Savage. A lot more rules get broken or changed there. The main one is the tank swap. In higher end content, most fights will have forced swaps between main tank and off tank. Off tank must become the main tank even if for a short duration. This comes in two flavors, both of which are shown in this singular fight in Pandemonium. Nine Savage has two different tank busters. The first is back-to-back -back AoEs that give elemental vulnerabilities. You need to swap after the first hit gets locked in so that the second hit will be the opposite. The main tank will get hit with back-to-back -back fire AoEs, and the off tank back-to-back -back wind AoEs. So once the cast begins, tank swap with provoke and shirk so who gets which attack swaps. The second one is a vulnerability on a single tank, but this too comes in two flavors. In this fight, the boss will do a big punch on the main tank. This puts a physical vulnerability on them, making auto attacks lethal. Tank swap so that they don't have a 100k auto attack. The other version is a double hit tank buster similar to the first, but one target at a time. Hit the main tank, swap, hit the off tank, swap back, main tank takes the boss back. There are other examples, but this covers most of the situations tank swaps come in. But I want to look specifically at a normal fight just to prove that these kinds of things can happen in normals. And for that, we go back to Alexander. This is probably going to be a mind-blowing moment for a lot of you, but A5 has a forced tank swap. 
these punches? At five punches, the tank is stunned and takes huge damage from the incoming tank buster. The off tank is supposed to provoke, take the hit, and then it will be safe to send it back. I accidentally wasted my provoke before the second time he did it and... Yeah, that hurts a lot, doesn't it? Luckily, it is possible to survive with max eye level and tons of mitigation. That's why I at least used reprisal. But back when this was new, it was all but a guaranteed death. Sometimes you just have to learn as you do. But in general, as an off tank, you should be ready to do anything the main tank cannot. Finally, I have a little mention of something I couldn't fit anywhere else. The case of the really bad main tank. You may need to force yourself into being the main tank. The main tank isn't pointing the boss north, spinning it around, not moving it when needed or such. Time to put your big tank pants on and force your way in. Spin it the correct direction, plant, and save the run. This doesn't happen all too often, but it happens enough for me to know to warn about it. They may even fight you for enmity, but sometimes you don't have a choice. Just don't be fighting for the boss normally. Make sure they really are putting the entire party at risk first. So yeah, that's off tanking and all the things that can happen, and more depending on what the comments have to say. This was a video someone requested, so feel free to request your own ideas even if you don't have any off tank ideas I missed. Rate and subscribe too. Share me around and otherwise any support is appreciated. Come watch me on Twitch. I play a bunch of stuff including learning controller for FF14. Take care and may the power of an Anidhog slay waste to your enemies.